Hi, it's John Ruffle here, and sometimes I feel like I'm sourdough starter. What am I talking about? The very observant among you might have noticed over the last few days I've had these little pots in the background, and um, it's actually my attempts at creating sourdough bread, which you don't use yeast for, but you use a starter, and as you can see that. That's my sourdough starter. It's a about two weeks old. The idea is that it bubbles up and f sort of ferments and it is a raising agent for the bread. And it gives your final loaf a really tangy, beautiful, um, slightly sour taste, which the old uh, gold rush people in Alaska, going up on the west coast, California, Alaska, used to eat. And that's where I first was introduced to it and uh, had a love for it ever since, but I've never actually made any. And I feel a little bit like these pots of starter, which don't seem to be doing that great, uh, in that um, it's experimental. It, it, you have to experiment if you want something new. Now, we've run out of yeast we have for several weeks because of the lockdown. It just isn't on the shelves. So that's why I've been experimenting with all sorts of recipes. Um, I did manage to find a recipe for brown bread. It's what I've been looking for, a recipe for brown bread. And I made this one yesterday. And um, you can see it looks great on the outside. And it, I made it with yogurt, just yogurt, without any, any um, uh, no other raising agent but yogurt. So it's a very simple recipe, but it's quite, although it looks great, it's very plain and bland. So I need to put more salt in it and see, maybe put some honey in it. Uh, because it needs to flavor up a little bit if I make it again. And uh, while we're on the topic of bread, you know, Jesus is the bread of life, isn't he? We know bread, seek that bread which uh, is unto eternal life. This is a um, soda bread using Kathy's recipe, Irish soda bread. And um, the first, it's only the second soda bread I've ever made in my life. The first one was a bit of a disaster, and so we gave it to Deacon Bill, bless him. Um, <laughs> we left it on his doorstep, so I've got some fresh bread for you. Uh, and he was very gracious about it, but I'm sure it didn't taste that great. And this one, at least it rose properly, and I did adapt the recipe slightly, so we don't know what this one tastes like yet, but that's soda bread. So again, this one doesn't have any yeast in it at all. It was just bicarbonate of soda that I used to raise the bread. So why am I talking about bread? It's because, you know, we, what is the charismatic renewal about? Well, for me anyway, it's about parish renewal. It's about conversion of heart starting here and flowing outward. And I'm not the most diplomatic person around. I don't pretend to be diplomatic and and perhaps that's annoying people is probably the, my greatest achievement in life. Um, and I don't do it deliberately, uh, but I do believe that even as I've been challenged in my life to consider the roots of my faith and so forth, I think that, that we all at times need to be challenged and shaken out of our comfort zones. I was telling a friend of mine earlier this morning, very early in the morning right now, but I was telling him about a friend I had who used to live in a tree in California. He genuinely lived inside a hollowed out tree. And uh, he was on a hippie commune out in California. But the, the owner of the commune was an older hippie called Sabrina. You, some of you may have heard of her. She's quite a famous lady. And she had this be these beautiful log cabins in this place called Sabrina's Land in Mendocino. But she gave her life to the Lord. And she gave all the people that lived, all the hippies living there, she gave them one month to, to get their act together and come to Christ or else go and find somewhere else to live. Well, my friend was one of the last people to make a decision to follow Christ. And he actually came out of his tree trunk to come to the Lord Jesus. And... He, at that point, he forsook his tree trunk. Not that there's anything sinful living in a tree. Um, but I met him after that. Um, so, you know, there was a confrontation, an inner confrontation, challenge to self. 
And this is what we all have to face in life. Right now with the lockdown, we don't have any choice but to come to terms with things. But it's been imposed upon us from outside. What changes are we willing to make without it being imposed upon us? Because if we're willing to make changes in our lifestyle, if we're willing to make changes within our own heart and be yielded to God, it's not even lifestyle, it's about being yielded to God, being like that dough that we make when we're kneading the bread and, and letting it rise. It's, it's, it's allowing our lives to be moldable to the Lord allowing him to change us from the inside. That's really the change that has to take place, folks. It's painful. I don't like pain, but I challenge you today. Let's move on, not in presumption, but let us move on in faith, childlike faith, trusting really that God's word and this, this book, The Daily Missile, is full of God's Word. <laughs> full of God's Word. But do these words actually, is it just, oh, that's the liturgy? Or do these words actually come alive and do we eat them and say, how does this affect my life today? Brothers and sisters, I'm concerned. I see many of us, and even other denominations, I don't call the Catholic Church a denomination, but other groups who are blind and deaf to the Word of God that is read time and time again. I just don't get it. So folks, please, I beg you, let us reconsider in our hearts. Lord, open our hearts to the change you want to make in our lives. Save us from ourselves, O oh Lord. Refresh us. O oh Lord, create in me a new heart, a clean heart, a heart that willingly sacrifices and serves you, a heart that cannot do without your word, that cannot live, that a hunger and thirst for your word and for your comfort and for your person and for your presence, not just in the Eucharist, but 24-7, in every part and area and time of our life, Lord. Let it be our prey upon our life and upon the parish. And Lord, I'm not asking that you renew the charismatic renewal. I'm asking you to do something new. And if you can take the, the seed that dies and goes into the earth, and, cre and create new life out of it, Lord, then I present myself to you and we present ourselves as members of the charismatic community to be um, your servants in whatever capacity, Lord, that you should call us to serve, that this new life might spring forth. Lord, I know it's going to be a challenge for every single one of us. None of us have the answers, but we do have you and you are the answer. You, Lord Jesus, are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. Amen. And having said that, I'm just going to look back on, on the readings for yesterday very briefly because it just struck me that, you know, yesterday's gospel, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Do we, did, did we read that? Did we hear that yesterday? No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. We have been given the words of eternal life. Are we treasuring them in our hearts? Are we embracing them with all of our being? Or is it just, oh, that was the Gospel reading? I wonder what Father Gary will talk about today or what your parish priest will talk about or perhaps we're just totally... We don't even look at the liturgy from week to week. Maybe on Sundays it's like, oh, let's get through with that and what are we going to do after church? Folks, come on, come on, come on, please, I'm begging you. If this lockdown, if the sacrifice of so many people throughout this country of the United Kingdom and throughout the world, if it means anything, then it has to be a self-starter like my sourdough starter which has to be fed every day 
for it to rise properly we have to be on board with this thing folks we you know and it's not finished yet my sourdough is not finished later sit down my experiment to see whether or not i can actually get a sourdough loaf out of it and folks join the journey please i'm begging you join the journey of renewal don't come out of this lockdown don't come out of this pandemic and all of the ramifications of it without allowing the lord to change you in your heart and i know in saying that the words are bouncing back because the challenge is for me as well i know he's been challenging me to be more generous to be more considerate to be kinder to be more thinking about the poor and so forth but it's not because of anything other than the inner work of the holy spirit in us remember we're preparing for pentecost pentecost sunday is the end of this month and if there's ever a season in the church calendar when we can be focusing on the holy spirit this is it every daily reading the first reading every single day of the mass there might be one or two exceptions i'm not sure especially on feast days but every one of them is from the book of acts we're traveling through the book of acts what does that mean folks we've got to wake up we've got to face reality if this is just words then i don't know why we're i don't know why we're going to church i don't know why we're doing the things we're doing but if this if the lord is spirit and he is life life and life in its abundance then please let us not be still born let us be alive and grow in christ Folks, I think all of us don't approve of abortion. It's an abomination. And yet we are spiritually aborting our babies left, right and centre because we're not feeding them and nourishing them in the womb of the church. We're not giving them the nutrition they need that comes from the word of God. And we have to repent. We have to turn our way. And I really... I said, some of you older folks will really get this and you'll turn it into prayer and there's other folks who'll just say, you know what, that's not why I'm in the church and maybe you'll turn away at least for a season. I can't help that if that is your choice. But at least it's a choice. Folks, we're being called by the Lord to make a choice. Are we going to be wholehearted followers of Jesus Christ or are we just going to go back to our pews and church as usual yeah we are going to have our mass back yes we are going to have adoration back yes we are going to have all these great blessings back in an abundance but if our heart has not been changed in these eight weeks then frankly i'm just going to say it is it might as well have been in vain and the people that we shout and clap for on Thursday nights, our NHS staff, our front runners, our heroes, and we've been clapping and honking horns and ringing bells at our house, outside our house. If that is all just those sacrifices, if, if it's been in vain, God help us. Folks, come on, we've got to wake up. This is John Ruffle. Yeah, I'm begging, I'm, I'm pleading with, it's just, it's just one person listening to this message today, wherever you are, whatever time, take up the challenge. Become an intentional, as Sherry Waddell says, become an intentional disciple of Jesus Christ. And it's going to mean sometimes running into conflict, but don't run from conflict. Run to Jesus, the author and the completer of our faith. Brothers and sisters, I had no intention of sharing this in this way, but here it is. I'm stopping recording because if I go over 15 minutes, YouTube won't allow me to upload it at this point in time. So I leave you with my blessing and my prayer and my exhortation to follow the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall make your way straight, bless and prosper you. In Jesus' name, Amen.